Hey, you. Yes? Yeah, you. Grown-ass man sitting there? You're gonna cry. So Ghostbusters Afterlife tells a story of a mother and two kids that discover their family's secret legacy as paranormal activity in their small town begins to rise. What is up guys? Well, we finally got the release of Ghostbusters Afterlife after being delayed over a year from last year. And if you have just now started following me, I have gone over the entire Ghostbusters franchise over the past week. So the first three films have full reviews on this channel already. If you have not seen them, go check those out. Come back to see this one. But Ghostbusters Afterlife was a movie that I've really been looking forward to. The trailers have looked like fun. I've heard nothing but great things from early critics to the friends and people that I trust that have seen it here very recently. And as somebody that, if you watch those reviews, hasn't really been too happy with the Ghostbusters franchise since that original 1984 classic, I was ready for another great Ghostbusters movie. So after the very poor reception to the 2016 reboot, Ivan Reitman's son, Jason Reitman, who's a very established director, he's done a lot of drama movies, I think Juno and Up in the Air might be the two that he's best known for, he's an Oscar winning director, he decided to write a script and take over the directing duties for another attempt at rebooting this franchise. And from that information alone, a lot of people started to get very excited because the kid that was literally on set watching his father create this classic in 1984 taking over the project and taking on the, the family legacy of the Ghostbusters franchise just seemed like a story that we all wanted to come to a very happy conclusion with this great movie that everybody really loved that were Ghostbusters fans. So did that come to fruition? Is this a movie that finally brings a great follow-up to that original movie or is this another disappointing follow-up to that original classic. Let's talk about it. And as a film that is trying to follow up that 1984 original, I think that this film did a great job at blending nostalgia, blending some very much needed heart into the story, and also giving you a very modern version of a Ghostbusters story that's a bit more family friendly, a bit more wide appeal, and to me, all of that came together to give the first truly great Ghostbusters sequel. You can tell there was a lot of love and a lot of respect given to that original property, to those characters, to the lore, to all of the pop culture that came out of that original movie while they were creating this movie. And it doesn't feel like it crumbles underneath the nostalgia. It doesn't feel like a movie that's out here just to give you winks and nods and just to show you things that you saw before to, to get you warm and fuzzy for nostalgia. This seems like a movie that genuinely started with how can we tell a Ghostbusters story and how can we tell a Ghostbusters story without Harold Ramis and then they figured out how to make the best, most heartfelt version of that story and then figured out ways to implement very well-placed nostalgia within that story. McKenna Grace is great in this as the lead, as Phoebe Spangler. She is very much the descendant of her grandfather, Egon. And just from the beginning of the movie, this is a character that you really latch onto because she has like her personal social issues. She feels like she's a bit foreign within her family. She feels like she's looking for some kind of explanation for why she loves science, for why she's not like her brother, why she's not like her mom. And just the start of the story of her slowly finding out that maybe she has somebody in her family that she gained all of these loves and hobbies that she has from it is just a heartwarming thing to start off with. But even beyond that, once she starts figuring out the lore of the Ghostbusters and figuring out all of these huge epic events from the 80s that she never knew about and starting to slowly discover these secrets within her grandfather's farm, discovering apparitions in the town, it's a fun journey to go along with this character as she is introduced to the most fun that she has ever had and almost gives her a place in the world that from the beginning of the movie it felt like she didn't really have. And everybody else in the movie does a really good job too and they are all really enjoyable characters. Nobody really gets the focus or the development or the, the story focus that Phoebe gets and that McKenna Grace gets but they all play a good part into the story and nobody feels like they're wasted, nobody feels like they're distracting. I mean from the little kid that she becomes friends with named Podcast, he's a very good, very effective comedic relief there. Of course, Paul Rudd is great. Everything that he is in, he always adds some value to. I really like Finn Wolfhard. I was starting to get a little bit burnt out on him for a while, but luckily he kind of takes a bit of a back seat to let McKenna Grace really shine in this one, which is a big surprise to me since he's a pretty big name nowadays and a very recognizable face. 
and even some of the returning characters that you get that I'm not going to get into the specifics with, even though the trailers showed some of them, every single return that you get is very respectful, very enjoyable, puts a smile on your face. Anybody that's a fan of that original movie, there's not a single returning character, a single nod, a single reference, or any kind of a story progression from that first movie that you will not enjoy and you will not smile at. Ghostbusters, we're ready to believe you. closed and that's something that really needs to be hampered on it really needs to be focused on that this movie did what the previous reboot could not to where that movie which I've already said I don't think is as terrible as people make it out to be just felt like they were borrowing the name and giving these tasteless nods and these tasteless cameos to all of the legacy characters of this franchise where this movie felt like the heartbeat of the film was that connection to the original and that progression that we have not seen since 1984, especially regarding the character of Egon. The way that they presented his character, the way that they presented him into this story and made it all focus around the legacy of his family was so heartwarming to the point where in the last five or 10 minutes of this movie, there's not going to be a single fan of this franchise that's gonna have dry eyes. And that was probably the biggest surprise about this movie and about the story that it told and about the experience that I had with it is that this has by far the most heart and, and the most soul of any story that we've gotten out of this franchise thus far. I mean, this started off as a very, almost borderline raunchy Saturday Night Live style comedy, but it had so much family appeal that it kind of strayed away from that. You had Ghostbusters 2, which not a fan of whatever that movie was trying to do, to me it failed. And then you had the Ghostbusters reboot, which was going back for raunch comedy. This movie really does focus on family legacies, on destiny, on the love and forgiveness and all of that. And it just comes together in a really nice, heartwarming way in the story. And that's not what I was expecting but it was a pleasant surprise to have by the end of the film. All of the effects work is damn good here. Yet again, which is something that all four of these movies have done really well, is had this nice balance of very grounded-ish looking apparitions and, and, and grounded monster designs while also having this kind of lighthearted, cartoony effect to it to where it rides that balance really nicely between something that you could kind of buy into and believe for the reality of what this story is telling you, but at the same time, it's got enough goofiness, enough larger than life, out of world kind of aesthetic to it that it keeps that family fun vibe to it. Nothing on here is going to be giving anybody nightmares, but it's all so much fun to watch from the ghosts to the dogs to the marshmallow men all of it was done so well and finally i appreciated the hell out of the fact that this movie seems like it succeeds very well at telling a finite story with an end to where if this is the last ghostbusters movie that we get it is a very satisfying ending to the franchise but there's enough there and there's enough hinted at and there's enough still lingering that if they decide to follow it up there is plenty that they can explore with another movie or two go, go, go! Now moving on to the mixed aspect, and this is honestly the biggest struggle that I'm having with this movie and the biggest thing that I keep going back and forth on in my mind, and I probably won't be able to decide until I watch it a couple more times. This movie to me is making a deliberate push into much more family-friendly humor and much more of a family-friendly tone to where this really does feel like it's aimed more so at children than it is at adults. The adults are more so there for nostalgia, but the type of movie that this is is something that if there was never a Ghostbusters film, you would find this in the family fun section at the video store. And while that's really enjoyable, and while my kids absolutely loved it, and while it's the most fun that as a family we have had all year in the movie theaters, as a fan of the original film, I do miss a little bit of that adult humor. Like the SNL style humor that they had in that movie that was definitely contained, it was never raunchy, it was never full on adult, but it was there, it was present, and has been a through line throughout all these movies for better or worse, I don't know how I like the fact that that's almost completely missing in this movie. But the comedy piece of the pie that is the recipe of a Ghostbusters movie is scaled down quite a bit in this film in favor of action spectacle, in favor of family story, in favor of nostalgia. And I think it all comes together pretty well, which is why it's mixed. I think that what they set out to do, they did very well. I just, 
I miss some of that comedy. Moving on to the negatives, and right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you that both of the things I'm going to say is very small negatives for me. These are not things that are over glaring problems with the movie or something that is really bugging me. They are just things that I walked away noticing that probably could have been done just a little bit better. One is that despite the fact I'm cool with Finn Wolfhard taking a bit of a backseat for a change, I feel like his character gets shortchanged in the story quite a bit to where we never really get to know much about him. He doesn't really get much of an arc here. I mean, they start the movie off with showing that he's got a crush on this local girl in town and he gets a job at this burger joint to be closer to her. And that whole development of their potential relationship really just feels like it kind of goes nowhere. There's like hints that it's going to go somewhere and then it just kind of flatlines by the third act of the film. Even the whole thing about him being very mechanically smart and being able to put the, the Ecto-1 back together and do a lot of mechanical things that his sister's more the scientific side, I never really feel like his value to the group really makes it into the forefront to where he has that mechanical ability that Egon always had too, but it doesn't really feel like the movie acknowledges it near as much as it does with the McKenna Grace character of Phoebe. And the other negative is that the movie might focus a bit too much on nostalgia. I think that's going to be the dividing factor for a lot of people. There's gonna be people that absolutely love all of the winks and nods, all of the returning characters, all of the returning villains, all of that narrative through line that directly connects it to the 1984 movie. But there's also going to be a lot of people that walk into this and think that the movie is completely hinged on nostalgia. And if you don't get the warm and fuzzies with that, you might feel like the movie is a bit empty without all of that. I fall more into this camp. There was certain aspects to it. I think that I would have appreciated more creativity, more originality, something that was unique to this movie as opposed to bringing things back but I really enjoyed what they did with it. That's kind of what I walked into the movie wanting was something that was gonna give me the warm and fuzzies for the 1984 film, so I got what I wanted out of that. But if you're somebody that doesn't necessarily want that, know that walking in, there's a lot of it. So overall, guys, I had a really good time with this movie. To me, it's by far the best follow-up that we've gotten since the first movie, and if this is it, I'm totally satisfied with that, but I will absolutely take more if this succeeds and they decide to give us more. To me, now, more than ever, the Ghostbusters brand has the biggest life and, and the biggest heartbeat that it's had since the 80s. So there's gonna be a lot of Ghostbusters fans that walk into this movie and walk out absolutely thrilled with what we've gotten out of Ghostbusters Afterlife. So if you're a fan of the original 1984 movie and you have been waiting for a worthy follow-up, I think more people than not are going to think that this movie is it. So absolutely take everybody in your family out to the theater and check it out. And when it hits the shelves, go out and buy it. So what do you guys think of Ghostbusters Afterlife? Were you a fan of this? Were you a fan of Ghostbusters 2 or the reboot more than the direction that they took here? Do you feel like the nostalgia was a great mix or did they do too much? Let me know all of your thoughts down below, guys. Try to keep them spoiler free. At least wait till the weekend to start discussing that type of stuff, but let me know your thoughts down below. Please like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button if you are a fan of the Ghostbusters franchise. Like I said, check out those previous three reviews and on Saturday, we're gonna be doing a ranking of all four movies in the franchise and then finishing out the Resident Evil franchise before that new film next Tuesday. So please hit the subscribe button. Do not miss out on any of that madness. Thank you guys for watching as always. And remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.